Reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. Prince Far, I was a man who can grace any style with wisdom, a chanter who quaked the walls of Babylon, a preacher who strike fear in the heart of the wicked, the humble in the garden, and the proud in the city, was murdered in Jamaica on September 15, 1983, just few weeks after the killings of dub poet Michael Smith who was killed after arguing with three men at a political rally at Stony Hill and St. Andrew, Jamaica. My name is Ras Dennis, and you are welcome back to another video by Reggae Gist Extra. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra's Prince Farai edition. This episode is about the circumstances behind the killing of Prince Farai who was known for his gruff voice and critical assessment of the Jamaican government. His track, Heavy Manners, used lyrics about government measures initiated at the time against violent crime. His killing on September 15, 1983 was the final element that convinced Roy Cousins to emigrate to Liverpool for good. Kindly stay tuned and do remember to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Santiago in peace. No more demagogue rules. Santiago, the Eastern African language. So you are the one who come here to march up this place, eh? Son, don't take your guns to town, cause we are no more feudal clowns in town. Originally known as King Cry Cry, Prince Farai was born Michael James Williams on March 23, 1945 in Spanish Town, but he grew up in Waterhouse, Kingston, Jamaica. Around the age of 15, he began to attend dances held in places like Carnival Lawn, where he listened to and was inspired by a DJ called Count Machuki. But it was Prince Ruff who provided the encouragement to young Prince Farai to enter the business. He started DJing for Sir Mike, the Musical Dragon Sound System, also working as a security guard at Joe Gibbs Studio, and later as a bouncer at Studio One. It has often been said that his early DJ name, King Cry Cry, was derived from either the pleading nature of his delivery or the righteous content of his lyrics. The actual explanation of the nom de Mike is much more prosaic. The prince had a strange habit of breaking out in uncontrollable sobbing on becoming angry. He recorded The Great Booga Wooga for Bunny Lee in 1969. He got the chance in 1970 to record for Coxone Dodd when King Stitt failed to turn up for a session. Dodd was sufficiently impressed to release the resulting recordings, Williams now using the name Prince Farai at the suggestion of another producer he had worked with, Enos McLeod. With a unique deep bass voice and talking over style, preferring to describe himself as a chanter rather than a toaster, he became a popular reggae musician, styling himself the voice of thunder. His first album, Songs for I, featuring the Lord's Prayer and various songs, was dedicated to the illiterate who could not read the Bible for themselves. He then worked with Joe Gibbs on the second album, Under Heavy Manners, before being signed by Virgin Records for their Frontline label. Twelve albums followed between 1978 and 1981, including the highly regarded Cry Tough Dub Encounter series of dub albums produced by Williams and released on his Cry Tough label and featuring the Roots Radix under the pseudonym The Arabs. Spending an increasing amount of time in England, he also collaborated with UK on U Sound Records including providing vocals in the reggae collective singers and players and may be considered a mentor figure to Adrian Sherwood. His final live performance took place on December 7, 1982 at Band on the Wall, Manchester, where he performed with Sons of Arca. This performance is captured on his album Musical Review. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra's Prince Farai edition. In 1983, he provided vocals on Sons of Arca's second LP Wadda the Magic, and many of these vocals have been reused by the band repeatedly on a variety of tracks and remixes ranging from their first album in 1980 to 2006. He is credited for vocals on the sleeve of each of the releases in question. Later that year he recorded the album on Canto We Siswi with producer Roy Cousins in Kingston. 
Before the album was finished, he was murdered at his home in Kingston, Jamaica, during a robbery allegedly relating to a dispute over money. His death was the last straw for Roy Cousins to emigrate to Liverpool for good. According to Roy Cousins, Them kill him, and me just decide fey call it our day. Them kill him over our dance, they wanted to keep our dance, and him give our promoter half of the money and owe him half, but the promoter woman mash up the dance, that night, she have our fight, so far I say him not pay his other half of the money. Prince is one of the men who come through the system, the hard way. Is our man who go to prison on Jamaica and certain things, and Jamaica is about survival. Edge water him live, and him go home to water him garden, and the gunman them all watch him, and as soon as him roll up the hose to go in, they go with him. Them say everybody fay lay down on the floor, and I hear him lay down neatly, him don't put up any resistance, but him wife, she knew the boy them, and she I put up resistance, and they shoot she first, but she never did, and they shoot him, kill him like an animal. In the living room, you see the blood with his finger mark all over the wall, when a person in agony. Roy Cousin said during a live interview on February 27, 2022 at the North Wales Caribbean Finger Post. Adrian Sherwood, deeply upset by the murder of his friend, took a production hiatus from his beloved reggae genre and in 1983 recorded with his group Circuit and Nene Cherry, Dead Come Alive. Prince Farai is also referred to by The Clash in their single Clash City Rockers and also by the Mountain Goats in the song September 15, 1983, a reference to the date of his death. For some reason people remember Prince Farai as a huge man, a gentle giant. On the contrary, he was quite slight, 5 foot 9 inches. His physical build tends to be purely, but remarkably, conjured up from the sound of his awesome voice and also perhaps his ability to enclose large amounts of bush weed within his fist. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another Many video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis. <laughs>